Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a pumpkin with some floral. Uh, I don't know. I guess it's being used as a vase, sort of. <laughs> Should be fun. Uh, I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do it from start to finish. And I'm going to try to keep it uh, beginner level friendly. So we're going to kind of simplify it a little bit uh, from the photograph. Not super realistic. Kind of more impressionist style. Got my husband Mark with me. Hey there, everybody. He's man in chat for our live show, so if you've got questions, you can ask those and I'll try to answer them while I'm painting. Let's get started. All right, so I'm going to be using a 9 by 12 inch canvas panel. And uh, we're going to, it's the Fredericks 9 by 12 inch. Uh, Belgian linen canvas board. Sorry, I'm making hand signals to Mark while, while I'm trying to talk. <laughs> it's not, it's like uh, Our printer is acting up again this morning, so I do not have... It's actually been printing the, for, for about a half an hour now, trying to get the, <laughs> the, the pumpkin printed off. It's, it's working on it. Maybe by the end of the show. Maybe. Hopefully we'll have the, the picture for you. Uh, but anyhow, I've got it up in the upper corner there for you to see. That's what we'll be painting today. And uh, we'll be using this 9 by 12 inch canvas board from Fredericks. Thank you to them. They are our canvas sponsor. We love them. They have awesome products. This is kind of a smooth board. Um, and it's it's kind of like lightly textured. And it's got a hardcore um, inner. So it makes it easy for me to store because I do so many of these paintings I do them on the thinner canvas they have all kinds of different thicknesses of canvases so if you don't want the canvas panels you can um, you know get thicker ones if you need them uh, but these are actually pretty nice because they go into frames really nicely they have the open back frames that you can put pop them into makes it really easy all right let's go over our brushes really quick I've got a number eight filbert for some of the background stuff I've got a number four filbert for some of the flowers uh, and let's see, I've got a variety of rounds here. Number two, one, and two aught for some of the more detailed parts, and a number two bright also. And these are all the 6100 series of Princeton. And then I've got a couple angle brushes, quarter inch and a three eighths inch angle in their velvet touch brushes. Uh, and Princeton is our brush sponsor, so we thank them for providing our brushes today. All of the materials that I've got are listed down in my uh, Amazon store and also uh, at thebrushguys.com. So all that information is down in the description if you're interested in finding the materials that we're using today. This is unbleached titanium, titanium white, quinacridone magenta, cadmium red, medium cadmium red light, yellow, uh, Indian yellow hue, cadmium yellow medium, yellow oxide, thalo green yellow shade, thalo blue green shade and light version, ultramarine and the light version, uh, doxazine purple, burnt sienna and burnt umber. Um, the light versions are just plus white and they're pre-mixed so it makes it a little bit easier for us to work quickly. But you don't have to have those colors if you don't have them. Uh, the ye Indian yellow uh, hue is more of a golden uh, orangey yellow so if you don't have it you can probably mix some yellow with uh, some of your uh, orangey um, red and get something similar so much more on the yellow side though you won't need as much let me go over the drawing really quick with you very simple um, you're going to come up just a little bit I came up about a fingers width maybe you could come up a little bit more if you want to um, Depending on the size of canvas you're using, if you used a square canvas, you could maybe have a little bit more room this way to play with. But um, I'm going to measure out just with my fingers to the halfway mark on the canvas. That will be kind of at the top of our pumpkin. And then we want to leave another space at the top there. So just kind of mark the bottom of your pumpkin and then sort of measure from the, there to the top and then kind of make another mark up here. That's about how wide you want it to be. And then in the middle there, we're going to kind of figure that most of this pumpkin is going to be covered up by some of these flowers. So it's probably cut out, you know, somewhere right about here at the top. But if we were to continue it up around, it would be up in here. So we're just going to kind of continue that circle. 
and come about, let's see how wide we are. I guess it's about, <clears throat> if you measure from the half way mark and then split it in half again, we're about uh, in the middle half of the canvas. So there's about a quarter of the canvas on either side and then equal parts on this way. So that's about how wide we're making our pumpkin. Round it out on the sides and then the bottom is pretty much just flat like that. Then our stuff inside we're going to come down from where the center is. So right we, if we were to continue our line around the center we'll be up here. So we're going to bring this first I guess it's a little mini pumpkin or something. I don't know. Down here, I'm going to put another one right here, another one up in here, like that. And then there's a big lavender rose that's right in here. And then there's some little scrunchy stuff. And another little kind of lavender thing that comes down here. Some other stuff that kind of trails down here. I'm not going to put a lot of the detail, I'm just going to put in the main defining features of the flowers. So there's this big succulent that's here. So the center is just above this one here. So you can kind of start there if you want to and just do a few of these little mini petals like that and then start to kind of come out around. And these kind of overlap these pumpkin shapes. From there, there's kind of these circular thingamabobs here, blue circles, and then these poppy seed pods that are tinted purple. And then there's another lavender rose in here. Did we get it printed out finally? Yes. What? Unbelievable. It actually turned off really nicely. It's taking its time so it could do just the right colors. There we go. So we're right here doing this one. We're going to have another little one here. This lavender one is poked in right here. And then we've got various leaves happening out this way. I'm not going to worry too much about this outer stuff because I'm going to be painting our background in around it. So I don't want to have a lot, to, a lot of stuff to paint around. But there's like berries and things right here. There's some more things hanging off right there. There's a big, I don't know what that is. It looks like maybe a leaf back here. And some berries off here. Another large seed pod right in here and then another one of these colors right back here that you're not seeing much of it because you've got this purple stuff coming in front okay so that's our basic um basic drawing and you should end up with kind of another rounded it almost kind of mimics this shape only it's a little bit larger uh, right, and then it's got a few of these um, offshoots happening. So I'm going to start with my number eight filbert, and we're just going to kind of paint in this background um, with really whatever colors we want to. They don't; ha it doesn't have to really be what's in our picture is kind of uh, blurred blurred shapes and things. So I'm probably going to clean it up a little bit, and maybe just do some unbleached titanium to start with and then we'll add some colors in there as we want them. So I'm going to just kind of 
slap that in towards the drawing go over the edges of any of the things that are kind of sticking out funny and I'm just leaving kind of the major outline of it we will be adding a lot a lot more to this inner spot but for now we're just going to do this What are you laughing at? One of our longtime uh, watchers, Steffi Cakes, uh -huh. says that uh, she's on a road trip with her husband, uh -huh. and he wants her to turn the volume down because your voice is too relaxing <laughs> to listen to while driving. <laughs> you don't want anybody falling asleep while they're Sorry. driving. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Maybe I'll just randomly scream real loud to Keep try to startle awake. everybody. Yeah. <laughs> That's really funny. All right, making kind of a dark brown here with a little bit of gold in it. I just touched a little bit. And if you notice, I'm kind of pulling my paint colors off into this area over here so that I have kind of a clean spot to work with. I'm going to go really dark right underneath our pumpkin. Let's just go ahead and pull it out around the side there. It's going to look kind of funky at first. We'll kind of blend this color in. We want it to keep it dark right there, though. Okay. And if your paints are just kind of smushing around, they're not blending for you, what you can do is wipe most of the color out. Just means you have probably too much paint on your brush. And now I can kind of go in and manipulate it a little bit easier and get some deliberate brush strokes in there. You know, make some... Visible brush strokes happen. Grab some of the more of that unbleached titanium. And now that my brush has a little bit of that brown in it, it's going to be kind of contaminated with it, I guess you should say. And so we can get more of this light brown happening. If you need to, you can add a little bit of water to your brush, but you want you don't want it to be too too damp. So just touch in lightly to grab some water. I'm just going to go right over the top of that, grab some more of this unbleached titanium up here. And if I don't want this brown all the way at the top here, I could, I could uh, clean out my brush all the way, but I don't really mind it. So. I can't remember what was over here. Oh, that leaf thing. So I'm just kind of going back and forth to get these sort of, I don't know, cross-hatched brush strokes. Kind of like that. And then uh, we can go in and put in color if we want. We've got this down now. I'm going to go ahead and leave it for now, I think. We'll see how we like it when we get uh, some of our pumpkin in there and we may decide we want to add some color here and there to this background, but for now I'm gonna leave it kind of neutral. I think it'll be a good backdrop to what we've got going on. So for people who are kind of new to the channel, mm -hmm. and so sometimes you paint around your main subject. Right. And sometimes you base coat the entire canvas and then paint over that. Right. So why do you do one or the other? Well, I mean, in this case, there wasn't any one particularly um, overwhelming color. I guess I could have done the whole background this color, but then I would just end up having to go back in and do these colors anyways over the top. So it just saves me a little bit of time since we're doing this live, but there's really no 
right or wrong way to do it necessarily. I'm going to grab some of the orange and some yellow oxide. This is actually, I'm saying orange, but it's burnt. It's a cadmium red light. Mixing that yellow ox or uh, yeah, yellow oxide with it. And grab a little bit of that unbleached titanium. And I'm just going to kind of go in here around the outsides of this and add some sort of nebulous color here and there just to kind of this whole kind of background area is sort of blurry so this will kind of add just a little bit of an indistinct blurriness back here like we don't really know what's happening but there's some color there could be a flower could be a leaf, who knows? Just kind of do that a around tank. the outside. What? A tank. Could be a tank, yeah. Very well camouflaged. Keep dreaming there, huh? It'll happen one of these days. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and grab some of the purple and do the same with that. And I'm going to use the Light ultramarine. So you switch mm, brushes on me. Ultramarine blue. Uh, yeah, I've got the number four filbert now. Okay. Sorry, was I supposed to tell you that? I forgot. I'm trying to do my. I know I should have told everybody. I forgot to mention it. Fancy graphics. I noticed that it didn't look different. Okay. Let's see. So this one was kind of out here. Just kind of doing a light keeping it very indistinct at first here. We'll just keep it light and maybe even grab some white so it's softer. Way back in here, there we go. Close to that background color, so just blending in a little bit more. Going over these. If your background's not dry completely, it might start getting sticky, so you can um, let it dry all the way before you do this. This is all just going to make that kind of this background fuzzy stuff that we're seeing that's not in focus. So that's what we're kind of trying to put in right now. It's just kind of all these kind of fuzzy background shapes and we're doing it really softly blended. That way it looks, once we put our really um, in focus stuff in here on top, it'll make a lot more sense and we'll, like, it'll really push all of that back and make it look even more kind of fuzzy and indistinct. Okay. And then there's some more right here, but this is more, these are more kind of in focus. So I'll kind of indicate where that goes, but I'm not gonna really put a lot of detail into any of that. We're down in here. So we're really kind of working from back to forward. So we're looking at all of the stuff that's way back here that's got all this stuff on top of it. So now I'm going to kind of create sort of a light green uh, color to do back here as well. So we'll grab some of the phthalo green and we'll add some of that orange to it. That'll make a kind of a neutral green. Grab some white. Some of that. And if we need to, we can add a little bit of yellow too. I might add a little bit of yellow oxide. There we go. All right. Make sure I've got enough white so that I'm keeping it very light. And let's see. This is kind of back in here where we've got this other 
color going as well. Tap in some of this green. There's a lot of it down here. And you can see I'm keeping it really close to that background color so that it's not going to stand out too much. It's going to be very kind of soft focus. And I'm dabbing it on so that it's kind of blurry looking. Just using the tip of my brush. some of these shapes okay so I think that's pretty good there's some more stuff that comes up this way but all of that is kind of more in focus so I think I might put a little bit of this up here but I'm gonna call that good so, so the darkest color is close to the middle and then I, as it goes out here, it's kind of faded. What were you saying? We got a question. Okay. Uh, they would like to know, what is the best way to handle color shift when you cannot do a painting in one hour? I'm guessing either won't, you know, do it quick enough or maybe do it in one setting. So how would you make sure that you have the same? The same colors. Um, yeah. You, you, I find that it can help to write it down. Um write down kind of your, while it's fresh in your head, sort of what you used, what colors you used. Um, you can also save your palette. Uh, if you've got, if you're using like a foam plate or you can even transfer, if you've got any color left on your, on your palette, you can scoop it up and transfer it onto a foam plate and then put another foam plate on top and stick it in a baggie um, to save it. Um, all right, so I'm making a light orange here with my cadmium red medium and use a little bit of the Indian yellow, I think, and some white. And, oh yeah, I use this color, cadmium yellow. All right, so Cadmium red, cadmium yellow, little touch of Indian yellow, and then some white. So I'm going to find a spot over here to mix my lighter version. And before I get too much farther, I'm going to go ahead and put in my pumpkin because it's going to be sort of our darkest. So I'm going to clean that out. I'll be using that in a minute, but right now I want to work on the pumpkin. Um, so hope that helped. I don't know. Um, yes, it did. <clears throat> okay. And you can also, um, well, yeah. One thing, though, is if your paint color is dry, like if you save your palette, if your paint color is dry, your color is dry on your canvas it will be darker it'll dry darker than what the mixed color will be so I was kind of mix it just slightly lighter than what it is on the canvas and you'll get it pretty close all right so I'm going to use the Indian yellow it's going to be my main pumpkin color so I'm going to use white look how pretty that is when you add white it changes the color quite a lot this is kind of a let me see how transparent it is on the bottle. I think it's fairly transparent. No, it doesn't say, but you can see how see-through it is. Um, so you're going to want to add a little bit of white just to make it more uh, opaque so that it'll cover on your canvas well. So that's why I added that white. And then I'm going to use this color that we mixed up here as well. So on this side, it's fairly yellow. So 
I'm going to go ahead and start with that color. I really love this color palette. It's different than... I don't use a lot of golds in, in my paintings. I should. It's really pretty. This yellow, kind of mustard yellow colors are really popular right now. Very trendy in decorating. And use a little bit of brown up here underneath our I think what works best for us for remembering what colors and how, how they're mixed is that we just record everything to YouTube and we can go back and watch there you it. Go. And then we see. So I don't know if people want to do that. Just <laughs> it does make it easier to remember. Yeah. But then I can't remember where in the recording it was sometimes. Oh, that's true. But I have actually gone back and watched videos for, you know, like when I've done two-part videos and it's been a few weeks in between just to remember what colors I used. Just make it easier to find less trial and error. Alright, so I'm kind of dabbing here, trying to get darker up here in the middle, lighter around the side, and I'm going to grab some of this green and put it down at the bottom here. Just a little bit. And this is all kind of staying wet, and now you can see I'm working in small areas. So, and I'm also putting this on in the direction that this pumpkin is growing, so um, it's going to be, you know, the streaks are kind of coming up and around this way, so as I'm doing my brush strokes, I'm going to follow that direction so that if I do have streaks show up it's going to look like we meant them to be there let's go darker around the bottom here working with the mistakes mm -hmm. okay. well it's not mistakes necessarily oh. but it's just you know it's just um you know, as we do these layers, we're just we're going to have layers upon layers. So it just kind of saves us time if we already have these kind of streaks built in to what we're putting down. Just grab some of that brighter cadmium red medium. Put some of that on. Grab in some unbleached titanium to kind of soften it up a little bit. And I want it yellow. So I'm going to grab that Indian yellow. There we go. Yellow is naturally a light value color, so you can use it to lighten instead of white there, which kind of made that red kind of creamy. If we use yellow instead, it'll, it will lighten it, but it will make it uh, better better value switch there for us and just keep on going around here makes it a better color than just the white and I'm keeping that kind of edge a little bit soft and fuzzy along here because if you look at our picture, it's definitely kind of fuzzy. So I want to say, don't let that dry. <laughs> You do that on purpose. I don't know what you're talking about. Just want to say hi to everybody. Welcome to this fall show, fall extravaganza. Using some burnt umber here. Is this kind of like a pumpkin spice? Uh, what do you mean? I don't know. It's pumpkin spice everything. Pumpkin so. spice season. It is pumpkin mm -hmm. spice season. 
even though our air conditioner is still running, it's technically fall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can hear that in the background, actually. So, so there you go. <laughs> we got some people watching live for the first time. So Ooh. glad you can make it to the live. Welcome. And anybody who's found Angela's channel, well, just checking out what's on YouTube. Welcome. We hope you subscribe to the channel and check out all our hundreds of videos on painting tutorials from beginner to expert. Got lots of stuff. Mm -hmm. Hope you like flowers. Cause it's true. There's a lot of flowers. flowers. I, I really ought to count and just see, you know, kind of what percentage of my videos are have flowers in there because I probably would say at least 70%. What do you think? Oh, yeah, I think at so least for 70 sure. 70% yeah. flowers. Grabbing some of this. Even when they're not the bright main focus. Orange I'm seeing back here. There's still flowers. Right, in it. exactly. You, There's never a bad time to put in flowers, my opinion. All right, so <laughs> I'm painting around kind of our main features here, getting some dark values worked in because we want these. Uh, it'll help when we put in our other details to have some dark color back here. Uh, I'm trying to kind of paint around, but it really may be a losing cause. We may just want to paint this whole thing with this dark. I just don't want to have to draw everything out again. So so the question... Kind of going in between our main things. What? The question just popped up. Do you have a Facebook group and the answer is yes. Oh, yeah, I do. There's a link down below if you hit the show more below the video and it, it'll pop up and you'll see all the uh, supplies, paints, and brushes, and link to the brush guys and Amazon store. And then keep on going down, and there's links to Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Teespring. Yeah, we have big groups on Facebook that where you can show share your paintings that you've done of my tutorials, and we do art art chats, and you can ask questions and that kind of thing. It's a little bit more informal than the tutorials, so we do those weekly on Thursdays on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So I'm adding purple now in the cracks here, just kind of a few areas. I added underneath the flower there and I'm gonna go ahead and add it kind of behind where the these uh, magenta flowers are happening. It's gonna look way dark at first. It's gonna, this is one of those ugly stage, uh, you know, paintings. It's gonna have, you know, it's gonna look worse before it looks better. So, just kind of know that going in. It's a normal part of the process. It's going to take a while before it starts to look good. Just kind of go with it. <laughs> All right, so now we've got most of our background stuff in. I'm still seeing some white areas here, so we're going to start working on those. I'm going to switch to a little bit smaller brush. Let's do the uh, let's do the number two bright here. And I'm going to put in some of this berries that are way far back here, so I'm going to grab some of this Indian yellow and to find these areas where these berries are going to go back in here and just sort of start to lay those in. I'm going to have more shadowing and things happening around these, so it doesn't have to be perfect right now. And again, we're keeping this kind of fuzzy because this is our kind of far background, so these don't have to be well defined. What we're trying to do is just kind of target these areas that might be still uh, white and add some color there. Let's grab some of this dark red here. I'm 
I'm seeing some red back here. Back in here. Clean that out. Do some more of this light yellow along the edge of that kind of leaf shape. And I could have, I could have used in uh, cadmium orange, but I found when I was kind of looking at my colors that the cadmium orange was just a little bit too bright. Like this, it was, uh, it kind of, this, this one kind of goes from this yellow to this bright red, but it doesn't have that kind of uh, really like, uh, I don't know, cadmium orange is just a little bit on the more neon kind of side. These are a little bit less, I don't know, it just, it wasn't quite there, so that's why I didn't, but if you have it, you could, you could use that instead. So if you have in cadmium yellow and you, or cadmium orange and you want to use it here in some of these areas, you could, you could totally do that. It's so up to you. Okay, let's just tap in. There's two things. There's berries and then there's these kind of small I don't even know what they are. berries they're kind of just and they're not really greenery it's this stuff here I'm talking about like shrubbery shrubbery <laughs> shrubbery shrubbery are you part of the knights <laughs> me some green and some burnt sienna and I still have that kind of yellow on my brush so it's kind of making this sort of neutral brown green let's add some of that in here okay somebody says that they are called seeded eucalyptus. Ooh. Nice. So if you think you can believe everything you see on the internet, then we'll go with it. I believe it. Okay. We're trusting you. I, I'm going to believe everything that I hear off the internet from now on because I thought that I thought that what was that word? wasn't the word the other night and Spelt. I got corrected. <coughs> Spelt. Spelt. Spelt apparently is a word. I don't know that it should be a word, but it is. So I spelt it right. You did spelt it right. It was spelt gate for a while. Yeah, we had a lot of controversy about that. So I stand corrected. It is a word. Uh, someone would like to know, could you use a complementary color to tone down the cat orange? Yeah, I did that in over here. If you well, I did it with the green, but yeah, you could do you could do that uh, the opposite. Use a little bit of blue or something like that. For sure. Okay, let me see here. I'm just trying to kind of figure out where I've got this kind of is not doing it for me yet, but we'll fix it. Let's put in some of these leaves that are in the background. I'm going to grab the green, grab the phthalo blue, make kind of a light turquoise, a little bit more on the green side than the blue side, and then I'm going to grab some of this unbleached titanium and make a really pretty sage green. Well, it's not really sage, it's more, well, yeah, sage has got a little bit more of the blue side, I guess. That's pretty. And that's probably his age, actually. So, 
uh, leave some of the dark so you can kind of use it at first to define some of these. And I'm just going to outline them. Grab a little bit more white here. It's kind of hard in some of in a painting like this because there's so many so much overlay overlapping. So it's kind of sometimes it can be difficult to figure out what to paint first. So this one's got a lot of this is gonna end up going over the top of some of our layers that we've already put in, but we'll kind of correct it. Let's go with some light color and just kind of while that's wet, just sort of blend in a little bit of that light color right around the edge there. I didn't catch. It kind of turned. What? I didn't catch your brush change again. This is number two. I've been using this oh, for a while. Oh, still number two. Okay. All right. Whew. You could use the angle brush too instead if you wanted to. Be similar effect. Let's grab some of that dark color. Do that dark right here, where it kind of goes up underneath some stuff. Use that dark, kind of put a stem down the middle. And I'm going to grab some yellow, a little bit of the white. Press my brush really flat. Use it to create a stem. Vein down the middle. My first layer of that pumpkin is dry now, so I need to put finish that up before I put the leaves on top. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to switch back to my uh, number four filbert.
can be read. And actually, I'm gonna use, let's use this brush instead, the 3 8 inch angle shader. And I'm going to use, tip down, drag it through the paint there. That's the burnt sienna and cadmium red medium, or cadmium red light, I mean. Burnt sienna, cadmium red light, angle, 3 8 inch angle, point it straight down, kind of pick up color and then just kind of dab off the back end there so that the color is mostly on this front side. And then, okay, get that off there. Can, can't see what I'm doing. And then we're gonna put it right along that edge right there. Darken that up. And let's put it around the side here, too. Okay. And then I'm going to grab some brown burnt umber, and I'm going to go really dark right under here. Just gonna pull that color down and I'm gonna go right over the edge just a little bit make sure that that uh, color we just put on there is either still drying or or totally dry or like still wet or totally dry not in between like if it's starting to dry we'll just pull it right off if we do this so we're just kind of putting some of this brown color over the top of that edge so that it's going to be dark. See that? Now it's going to kind of disappear that edge a little bit. Let's use some of that cadmium red medium brown burnt umber, pull some of this color down. We already have a little bit of it on there, but pull a little bit of that color down. Just got a weird edge right here. I'm gonna clean out my brush and grab some of the cadmium red that was right there and just kind of pull up, blend that in. Wipe my brush off. This is where you want to move quickly. Before that dries completely, just kind of add some of that Indian yellow, a little bit of that red. The colors are wanting to dry on me. up and through there. If you get too much color where you don't want it, wipe your brush off. Grab the color you do want there. Just go over the top. Blend that out. And we've got to do this while this paint is still wet or it can start to lift and things on us so just kind of working quickly kind of trying to blend through this this is probably going to be the trickiest part of this painting just to kind of get this blend from dark to light on our pumpkin just right But I've got enough wet paint on here now that I'm kind of able to sort of push it around where I want it to go. 
grabbing some more of that brown, dark brown. Pulling it down. If you ever see uh, an area start to kind of turn, uh, start to lift the color like it's not laying down the paint anymore, then you know that your paint is start to dry and you just need to stop and let it set and come back and keep blending later. Okay, so there we go. We're pretty good. And now I'm going to start adding our dots to it. So once we get it kind of where we want it to be, I'm going to use the bleached titanium and a little bit of that yellow. Actually, let's use white it's actually pretty light. White plus that Indian yellow color. And I'm just going to use the tip of my brush to sort of draw in these shapes on my pumpkin. Dabs for the dots, straight down. kind of freckles on here. Okay, we got some questions about your uh, okay. your blue towel. So I'd let the people yep. in the chat know that it's a shop towel. Right. And that uh, we have, they're available in the Amazon store. Yes. Link. And so why do you prefer those more than just a standard paper towel? Because they don't, um, they don't have fuzz Kind of like lint free. They don't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They don't have lint that comes off of them. Okay. It doesn't interfere with the painting at all. So they're fuzz free towels. Yes. Grabbing some of that darker color here for the shadow areas. Yes, they're lint free. They don't. You don't. The last thing you want is when you're wiping, you know, these off, is to have a bunch of uh, lint coming off and, and it will happen if you use the wrong kind of paper towel you'll get these little lint piling you know it like piles up like a like uh, a sweater or something you know okay And then I'm going to use my angle brush, or my uh, fan brush, oh, I said that, fan brush, water that down, there's just a lot of like splatters, so I'm just going to go ahead and like splatter that whole pumpkin, and we're going to end up having to re redo some of the dark colors, we'll have to glaze over it a little bit, but I'm going to go ahead and do this right here. And then I'm going to use my towel and lightly dab off, make sure this background is dry. Lightly dab off any areas where these splatters got that you don't want them. Now we could do splattering on the whole canvas at the end, which we may end up doing, and then it won't really matter. But if I do splattering, I probably won't do the light color, though. I'll probably end up doing, like, a brown or something like that, or blue. Let it set for a minute, and then you can kind of dab off some of these, too, if you need to. What it'll do is kind of add sort of this ghosted dabs. It's a little bit softer effect. So just dabbing off, it leaves the color on there, but it's not as obvious, right? 
And then I'm going to go back in. Just add a couple more kind of bigger spots back in if I need to. And you'll find if you press straight down with your brush, you'll kind of get almost a circle color, like a circle shape with this angle brush. It works really well. So. some up there, even in that dark area. There we go. So you notice our lines are kind of mimicking the curve of this outer edge. So this one's kind of doing this. In the middle, they're kind of going straight up. And then as we go around, they're going to kind of angle this way. Also, that'll emphasize that curve. I think we're done with that. We'll be good. And isn't that fun? Now we've got a textured pumpkin. that angle brush really well. Now that we've got our pumpkin pretty much done, we can start to lay in all these other things over the top that we've been waiting on. Uh, so let's start from the back here and we'll just work on these big blue round things. Let's grab some. It's pretty much thala blue plus white, it looks like to me. So I'm just going to use that. There is one, let's see, so they're right up here. There, one here. Going darker. We're always going to start in the darkest value and then we can always add our light colors on top pretty much what you want to do with acrylics most of the time. Start with your dark areas and then work to the light. So we've got our three little round seed pods and then we'll put the stem in. There, there's one over here. So I'm going to leave that there. Let's grab a little bit of the yellow blue on the tip of our brush and just dab it in on top to create that texture. Just really dark areas. These ones that are being overlapped, I'm going to kind of, this one's on top, so I'm going to kind of go around it a little bit and do this dark kind of around the bottom of some of these ones that are in the back. Clean it out. Grab the yellow blue light 
Let me pick up a little bit of the a little bit of that medium color and I'm going to just dab in highlights on those seed pots Run over the top so you kind of add a little bit of fuzz to the edge. said, do you ever feel like poor Angela doesn't get to come to the party? I do. I do. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> she misses the live chat. I know. It's a mess. You want me to put it up on your screen over there for you? No, it's okay. I'd be too distracted. I wouldn't be able to paint. Yeah. I can chat as you. Oh, wow. I can chat as you. You can. How come? Because you're my admin, probably. Because on the on the window where we launched the live stream, mm -hmm. it has a chat there. Nice. And it's you. And I'm logged into my account on that one. Yeah, so. Nice. So you can pretend you're me. You just said hi to everybody. <laughs> oh, man. People know that it's me, though. How do they know that? <laughs> they must have you just said it they must have ESPN ESPN <laughs> okay It's more of the light blue over here. So could you go back over the uh, blue that you just mixed? This is stale blue and white. That's all it is. Okay. Just trying to get enough contrast between this one and the two behind it so it looks like it's in front. So just been kind of going back and forth. These back ones have some highlights, but they're not the highlights aren't don't go down all the way close to the this one. There's a little bit of dark area right there where they overlap. That looks pretty good, I think. making this one a little bit wider. So how do you think they got those flowers to grow inside the pumpkin like that? <laughs> that is just some it's magic. horticultural talent there. I know. Maybe we should paint some of the plants that we have. No. No? <laughs> you mean my dead mom's on the back porch? <laughs> is that what you're saying? Are you trying? Are you outing me? My that could be one of the dead. That could scrolls. be one of the dead plants yes. that we paint. <laughs> we, we I try are, so hard. I'm not. I'm not good at it. We are where plants go to die. Yes. We're kind of like the. Uh, I don't. I don't want to be too dark. So I'll just say, we. We can get weeds to grow pretty well, <laughs> and that's about it. <laughs> Well, burnt sienna and the Indian yellow here. And I'm going to use this. Let me switch back to this 
little smaller. Actually, let's use the angle brush. Let's use the quarter inch angle. So I've got this burnt sienna and Indian yellow color. And I'm going to sort of define some of these berries that are back here. And just sort of use the edge of my brush to round out some of these shapes that I already put in. And I have it kind of loaded all the way through, but it, it doesn't really matter too much. You can, you can if, it, if it gets too much towards the center, you can kind of use your finger to sort of clean it off. But uh, I'm trying to see, yeah, there's all these berries have shadows on this one side. We'll go back in and add highlights obviously, but for now we're just going to kind of put in these shadows. This is turning out to be a lot more complicated than I had intended. There's a lot of a lot, of, lot going on in this though. Once this is dry down here, once our pumpkin is dry, we can go back in and just kind of lightly go over, glaze over some of these areas that have the light color if we need to tone it down. Mostly it would be kind of around this bottom area where we wanted that shadow to be. That would be the only place that would really would matter or up in here. The rest of it is pretty, pretty good. Let me grab some green. Add that to a little bit of that cadmium red medium. Use that in the shadow over here just to lightly kind of add a little bit of that green tint to the pumpkin on this side just slightly in that shadow area. We're going to put leaves over the top of that but we'll have that there first. Let's mix a little bit more of that green and turquoise color for our leaf. Do one down here. Another one that comes across there. And these are fairly dark so keep them all the way dark. Notice there was another leaf down here. I don't know if I can fit it in anymore. All right, that's good. Let's add some yellow. Make a bright lime green and there's a lime green leaf that's down here. Just a little bit of one. And some white. some of this color, this kind of lime green color, to put in, what they call it, eucalyptus, something or other? S yeah, something See? seeded eucalyptus. Okay. I think. 
So we've got some background color on here already, so we're just going to kind of lay in some of these shapes over the top of where we've got these dark areas to kind of define these a little bit better. They're do this little starburst thing. They kind of have a stem and then they have these kind of things radiating, up, radiating off the edge. So I'm going to go ahead and do this stem, long stem right here. Another stem kind of coming out this way. And then a few kind of coming off the sides a little bit. For that to be that big, and then switch to a little bit smaller brush. Let's grab this one. This is the number two ot. That color. Let's grab some in. Uh, unbleached titanium. A little bit of the. Yellow oxide. And I'm just going to kind of use the edge of the tip of my brush to sort of draw in these little shapes here. Set my brush down so it kind of flares out a little bit and then kind of pull it towards the center of the stem. And I'm just going to do this quickly so. burnt sienna to a brush. Maybe a little bit of the quinacridone magenta. Go in and kind of touch the tips of these. some of these over here. There's some down here. in amongst that. And some up here. Make sure we put in the stems. Some of these are over the top of this blue here. Right, and then there's a whole section of them right here, but we're gonna have to wait and put in the flower first. So let's go ahead and work in our purple flowers seed pods here. This is going to be mostly this color, this unbleached or uh, ultramarine blue. But there's a dark area there that's on one side. So we're going to add ultramarine blue with a little bit of purple. Create a deep purple color. And. 
paint in those seed pods. Really probably should have done this before I did that blue one, but that's all right. Kind of an oval and then it's got a little top to it there. Sorry, I know. <laughs> Thinking really hard. You're focused. I am focused. Let's use this color to do the these flowers that are back here. laughing I am I'm laughing at myself why what'd you do because you you commented on how great of a job I'm doing mm -hmm. I did mm -hmm. it's pretty cool how you can paint and type and type at the same time you are doing a great job I'm glad you noticed <laughs> I like having fun with you. Me too. I'm glad you're doing this with me. Okay, going with the lighter color now. I'm just kind of adding some of this in. These are clustered so tightly you're not really seeing the stems much, so I'm just going to kind of Dab these in and leave a little bit of space in between them. We're definitely going to add more of the lighter colors on top, but for now we're just going to kind of put the light ultramarine on. I love this color with that orange. It's so pretty. The combination of the colors is just so neat. Not a combination you see all that often. Okay, so this goes right over the top of this one. Use this light of light um, ultramarine blue light, light ultramarine. Create this oval shape at the top here. Leave a 
nice dark area underneath. I kind of covered too much of it up. Grab some of that darker color. I need a really dark color right here. Wipe my brush clean. Would you mind wash, washing out my water and my brushes for me real sure quick? Sure thing. Yep. I'll thank do you. it. They're kind of a mess. I'm it's like out really dark. Off. Okay, thank you. Make sure you say nice things about me in chat. I will. <laughs> Always. Always. Okay, so really dark. Let's do really dark up here. Just right up underneath where that top of the seed pod hits. There. Wipe my brush clean, kind of do some dark shadow on one side of these. Oops, tried to put my brush in water, it wasn't there. Okay, grabbing the light color now. I'm going to do the light color on this side. I'm lightly doing that and dabbing with the corner of my brush up in the top. And this color is almost identical to these here. But these are a little bit, maybe a little bit more blue, so we'll probably add a little bit of blue when we put our highlights in just so that we can tell the difference. Grabbing white now, mixing that with it. And just lightly dragging it over the top of that paint on our highlight side. To create highlights, dabbing it in at the top to highlight the top of our seed pods there. Going around in a circle on this one. Did you tell everybody you change your brush? I don't know. Probably not. This is the number two round, too flat, bright. I'm sorry, too bright. And grabbing the darker purple and going in here and doing a little bit of the darker purple and some spots. Let's grab some of that quinacridone magenta and add just a little bit of that in some of our shadow areas. Just. I add another color. There we go. And let's, while we've got this quinacridone out, let's mix it with this purple color we got. Quinacridone, doxazine purple. I'm going to create a dark violet. And we'll use that to create our rose that's in here. 
We've already got some dark purple down where it's going. Use some white. Get a bright highlight color. It's really not defined, well defined. It's very blurry in our picture, so I'm just going to kind of do some indications of some shape, but it's not really going to look much like a rose. Let's grab some quinacridone, go in with some bright version. Maybe add just a little touch of blue to it to make that kind of light soft violet for our roses and go ahead and put that in here. Here and here. This one is kind of a two, almost like a tulip shape. It's kind of a U-shaped flower. This one is kind of disappearing down into this dark area here. It's kind of smushed in here. There's a petal that kind of comes out like this. And let's use some of that dark, really dark color. Put in some of this color. Creating kind of a circle right here and then sort of outlining it a little bit. And then there's a petal that kind of these two crisscross. And then there's a really dark area right here where this petal comes down, right there. Okay, let's do some of this dark color in the separation between those two. There's gonna be a petal that kinda comes up at a diagonal like this. Another one kind of cuts off here and then this part is facing up so it's not we're not seeing any of that. Let's grab white. some white highlights. I'm going to keep it pretty pretty uh, impressionist style, not really putting a lot of detail into this. So just making sure that I have a little bit of light and dark in that area there. Just 
just using that edge of my brush to create these shapes. Crisscrossing each other. Like that. And you have other tutorials where you do roses and yes, really I show do. how to do those. Right, I do. Yeah, because I'm going over it fairly fast today. Mm -hmm. The main thing is just to have some contrast between these petals. Uh, you know, if you have them too close to the same color, you just won't see any any of this. detail. Okay, I'm going to let that set. I may have to add more color. This one really doesn't have a whole lot of detail in it, but in the picture it doesn't really have a lot of detail, so we're okay. I think these petal, these flowers need lighter, a lot lighter, so I'm going to Grab the quinacridone magenta and some white here. If I can find some clean white. Put out some clean white. really don't see a whole lot going on in this flower here. I'm trying to kind of figure out where the center of it is even because I'm not really seeing much so if we want to we can just kind of create our own center that might make it a little bit better. Just kind of do a sort of circular section there so we have like a little bit of Contrast going on on that one. I think it looks better. And let's do the same thing with this one. Just add some of this lighter color. It's really kind of just a spiral. Okay, I'm going to call that good enough. Let's use some Indian yellow and some of that burnt sienna. And I'm going to double load my brush, so I'm going to grab a little bit of the burnt sienna on one corner of the small brush there. Find a small area to just kind of flatten those out together. And use those together up here to create my little berries.
No, I'm just going to kind of round these out. So I feel like I have to tell everybody what you were doing when I came home last night. What was I doing? I don't even remember. So, you know, during the shows, I kind of enjoy the Angela math that happens oh, with yeah. its two fingers wide or, right. you know, a quarter of a half of a sixth. Well, I was getting ready to go to yeah. Hobby Lobby. So I come home and Angela's over by a piece of furniture and she's measuring it out. Okay, it's it's one arm and two hands. Yes. Long and come on. <laughs> it's <laughs> wide. <laughs> well, that's what you have to do when you're, you know, don't want to bring your measuring tape along. Yeah, I was going to say, we, they had just measured, you know, created something like a measuring tape. I did measure it. I knew yeah. how much it measured, but then if, if they didn't have the... They didn't have the actual dimensions on the piece, which they didn't. And I can see somebody walking by you in the store as you're trying to measure it out with I your was. arms and hands. I did. And I put like, my whole arm down <laughs> on it and put one hand and was like, yep, that's the right size. Just, it worked like a charm. Hey, <laughs> if it works, <laughs> that's all that matters. <laughs> mm-hmm. Hashtag Angela math. <laughs> Makes sense to me. So. <laughs> that should be the little underwriter. It makes sense to me. <laughs> Underneath. All right, so I'm going to grab some cadmium yellow medium and my white here. Make a really light yellow. Use that to highlight these berries. If you get it too much, you can just kind of use your finger to tap it off a little bit. You really ought to be using a smaller brush because this one's a little bit too big. But. I was trying to figure out why Scooter's making so many noises. Why? And not laying in his bed. Because Cashmere's laying in it. <laughs> Cash- Scooter, did Cashmere take your bed? My cat. He's laying over here by my feet. Okay, using this in bed. Orange. I don't know why these berries are taking me so long. They really should not be taking that long. I keep saying orange, but I mean the cadmium red light. Adding a little bit of that to the dark side. Berries. Lose my voice. <coughs> Okay, there we go. Uh, all right, and then there's a couple of them in here that I missed.
Uh, let me see. Okay, I think I got them all. <coughs> all right, let's do our pumpkin things here. So I'm going to grab the cadmium red medium. Cadmium red light. Mix those two together. For this one in the back right here. It's going to go right over the top of that, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. This is going all the way over to here. Okay. And then let's use this color on this one down here. not a circle really it's kind of a misshapen oval oh, that pretty such an unusual color to put with that purples and blues but it really works because the yellow is opposite the purple, the orange is opposite the blue on the color wheel, and so you're getting this really beautiful contrast. It's very, like, popping off the canvas. Let's use a little bit of the cadmium yellow and green. And some of the light cadmium red for this one. These are right up next to each other. It's going to be kind of a weird color, but we'll put a lot of brighter colors on top. So it'll make sense. Cadmium red light, tiny bit of white. I'm going to start shaping this out. Actually, I might just put the center part in first so I know where to shoot for. So I'm going to do brown and green, burnt umber and green, and do the center. There, there. And here. Clean that out. Grab a little bit of green and yellow oxide. Switch to a little bit smaller brush here. I've got the 
quarter inch angle. I'm going to pull out from the outside in towards that spot there on this pumpkin. I'm going to dab a little bit of this color into the center. Go with a little bit of this light cadmium red light with a little bit of white that I mixed, and we're gonna kind of pull sections out from the front out. dark side in. It's good or how you doing puppy? We're out two hours aren't we? Almost. We're getting there. Not quite finished yet. Let's use a little quinacridone magenta. Add some of that into this dark area on this one. Can you go out? grab some purple here and pull some lines with the purple in towards the center. Just make a really dark <coughs> excuse me. Losing my voice. Okay, now we can go the lighter color. Let me switch to my, this is the number two round. cadmium red, light cadmium red, cadmium yellow medium. I'm going to just kind of put this, these highlight streaks in on this pumpkin all the way around. This one is a little bit darker on the highlights, so I'm going to grab the a little bit more of the cadmium red medium to do on this one. And go ahead and use some of that color 
on this one kind of around the highlights. I'm always kind of watching this the angles that I'm doing this so that they're radiating out curving if curving down on some of these like these ones are going to kind of curve down this way let's put a little bit of this color in the middle Just kind of define the shape of this one a little bit better. There we go. So it's got these kind of really defined lobes. And then I need to go really dark in the centers of these. So I'm going to grab a little bit of purple and just go really dark. Where these kind of connect. This one's dark enough. And then let's do this one here. softening up any of these lines to look a little bit too thick. Cadmium yellow, white. Let's get some of the Indian yellow. There's some color coming up there. There we go. Let's use this color on here. This is definitely more complicated than I had intended it to be, so 
I always seem to complicate these things. I distinctly remember you saying in the intro, keeping this... I know, I did too. ...for uh, beginners and more. It's not, it's not this part, these parts especially. There's really no way to make these look good without kind of putting some detail in them, though. I mean, otherwise they're just going to look kind of weird, so... Yeah, why would anybody want to be able to paint these, like, really well? Well, I'm just Come saying, I, I, you know, kind of wanted to keep it simple, but it's it's not a... Some of these shapes are just not simple to do, so... And everybody appreciates you taking the time and talking them through it and showing them how to do it, okay. so... Yes. Grabbing that quinacridone color. Just adding some of that around the sides of this one to define some of these lobes. And then let's use I'll let that dry and I'm going to use some white, just a tiny touch of this light ultramarine and pink. So we're going lighter than this color here, just a little bit lighter. A little bit of highlights to this purple rose. One more layer of highlights. <coughs> and then use the white, a little bit of yellow. Wipe most of that off my brush. And just use, ooh, I pushed it in the what, yellow, purple plot. Find a clean spot on your towel to do that. There we go. Maybe a little bit more yellow. Just right in the middle here, just doing a little bit. Highlights on that one. Let's do a little bit on this one. There we go. It's more of that light, cadmium red light, and just adding a little bit more of that. A couple places. And then I want to use some of the cadmium yellow and Indian yellow together to do a nice bright yellow on a little bit of this pumpkin here. It's got some bright yellow spots. There we go. Grab some of that white. Put some highlights on those berries. Grab that yellow color and use that. A 
yellow tends to be transparent, so you, it, you can kind of go over these dark areas without, it'll still keep the value dark, but you can kind of tint it a little bit more towards the yellow. There we go. some of this bright green. This is cadmium yellow and yellow green I think. With a little bit of that orange base. We'll use this to do our little small eucalyptus thingy bobs. some of it over the top of this, so let's grab some, uh, let's do the dark first. I'm going to grab some burnt sienna and do some over the top of our other flowers and things. I think you missed a spot in the middle there. Where? There's a big white blotch open in the middle oh, of the painting. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll get to that. <laughs> we'll get there. Working my way towards it, slowly but surely. Going to add some white to this light green here. There we go. So your succ succulent is going to go there? Yeah, the succulent's going there at the very end. That'd be a perfect segue into your Facebook That's group. true, I just finished my succulent in there. It took us 10 hours to do that one. Hopefully this one won't take that long. <laughs> yeah, me too. You want to go play video games, don't you? It is beautiful outside, for sure, right now. Mm. This is burnt sienna here, just kind of tapping in some of this color. Oh yeah, we need to do up here. Up here, we didn't do the quinacridone. Mix a little bit of that burnt sienna and, I don't know, I think there was some of that green in there too, maybe. have to define all these so I'm just kind of trying to dab in a little bit of color here and there. Okay. 
I'm going to call that good enough. Let's do, oh, let's do a little bit up here. Light color. back there. Put in our light ultramarine flowers. We kind of started some of them, but we didn't do all these ones that were over here yet. go with some blue here and kind of do some darker in this area because it's disappearing against this light leaf color. chair isn't the most comfortable in the world. No, it's not. Definitely not. I need to get one of those sweet gaming chairs, but I don't think it would fit over here in this corner. I don't think so. We're going to have to get you better set up back there. I'm going to grab a little bit more of the light ultramarine in white. So go a little bit lighter this time. And I'm going to dab highlights. Don't cover all your dark areas, otherwise you'll just end up with a big white blob. So keep that in mind while you're putting these in here. mind. Okay. They would like to know why you switched up the colors on the pods and the roses. Uh, I guess your roses are a little bit more purpley than they are in the picture. They seem to be a little lighter in color. 
Oh, I just did that to give them a little bit more contrast because they were, if you look at it from far away, it's just like a big, you know, there's not a whole lot of contrast there. Mm -hmm. So I just did it to give it a little bit more, more contrast so that they'd stand out a little bit more. You could see the shapes a little bit better. Okay, I don't like that. That was too much there. I'm going to grab a little bit of that lighter color. There we go. just at the very end. Okay. switch to this brush here. This is the 3 8 inch angle. For the succulent, I'm going to make a teal color. So I'll mix some of the phthalo blue and phthalo green together. A little bit of white. Start with that. There, there's a big petal that happens right here. Flower, I don't know what it is. Leaf, I guess. Some of that purple and kind of go in here and add some darker purple in this area here. X 
actually put some of that color down in here too. some dark purple in amongst there and kind of underneath our shadow areas here where it should be darker. Some of that light thalo blue. I'm just going to kind of outline it, pull towards the center. said that uh, when it is hard to cover the bottom layer, is it the paint or the color? Um, it could be both. If you're co if you're having trouble covering with a color, uh, you can add white, and it it'll help, you know, uh, cover better. But uh, some colors like yellow are just really hard to cover over other colors. So, but, and then, you know, some paints, like if you're using like craft acrylics or a student quality, quality acrylic, then you can definitely have trouble covering. They're, they're not going to cover as well as a heavy body acrylic professional quality paint. They don't have as much pigment in them. So there's, it's, they're more like translucent to begin with. Go too far towards the center of these to keep the center dark. So I'm just kind of outlining as much as I can without covering all the dark areas that are going to be in the center and sort of in between the petals. If you cover a dark area and you need to go back in, you can always kind of outline it. Go back in and outline. Thing. Grab some of this light ultramarine for this one right here. Use it around the outside of this one. There's, it's kind of an odd 
combo between the purple and teal. So you've got kind of both colors happening on it at once. Grab the smaller angle as we're getting down into the middle part of the flower. And grab some purple and just right in here do some dark purple right up underneath the center part. Teal, so we're gonna petal kind of coming straight out at us. That does this kind of shape there. I should have done that a little higher. Let's try that again. We'll put the purple in. Clean that off. the teal Brush. Let's do the two pot. The light yellow blue. Add some white to it.
grab some. darker teal green and go underneath this one that's gonna got a shadow underneath it. Call that good. <laughs> that was a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. I'm glad I did this on a Saturday. I almost did it on a Tuesday <laughs> night, and I thought better of it. Okay, I'm going to do some more highlights on that side of the pumpkin there. More kind of bright yellow. Now we can kind of glaze anything that you see that needs to have a little color. I might put a little bit of the yellow on here even, just in a couple of spots. But I think, did we do it all? Did we get it? Anybody see anything that I need to catch? Didn't do yet? I think we did it. And I kind of like the background the way it is, so I'm not going to mess with it. I think there's so much color going on here. We don't really need to add anything else to it. So. Did you want to splatter one more time? Uh, yeah, let's do it. Why not? Why not? Why not? Let's do some phthalo blue. A little bit of white. Let's just color here. Give it an interesting... And what we can do is just kind of put it anywhere we don't want, you know, our splatters to go. So if you don't want it on your pumpkin, you can cover your pumpkin. Just tapping with my finger to get that color to come off. Yeah, I like the splatters. I think it adds to it. I'm going to sign it. Got super chat. What? Oh yeah. You got super chat, babe. Sweet. So, hey guys. <clears throat> it started off with Norma Jean and she said, thanks for all you do. Appreciate these vids. Then Norma. went on to Sandy Jane Holt and so the first time she donated, she said, thanks everyone, Angela, Mark, and chat friends for cheering me up today. You all rock. And then the second time she donated, she says, so last Saturday when the paramedics took me away, I'm saying, but wait, I haven't super chatted yet. Oh. <clears throat> so Sandy shared in chat that while watching the video, she had a... A minor heart attack. But, <laughs> Sandy. <laughs> Stop making me cry well. <laughs> so I said, that's like duh bears. Yeah. Wow, I'm so glad she's, <laughs> she's feeling better. Yeah, Hopefully. So I think she was still in the hospital recovering, but oh, she's my watching. Lord. <laughs> she's hardcore. Sandy. So she's got hardcore uh, fan for the year, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Then uh, we had Angelina, and she says, a Angela is my muse. I'm grateful for what you guys do. Thank you, Angelina. And then we have Darlene, and she says, Thank you for the great art lessons, Angela, and thank you for making it possible, Mark. You two are the best. 
Thank mm. you. Who was that? Darlene. Darlene. Thank you, Darlene. And then we had a donation from Victoria. <laughs> and we had a donation from Laura. And we had a donation from Skirker. And there were no specific messages, but they donated. So wow. thank you to Victoria, Laura, Skirker, to everybody. Y'all are so awesome. generous to us. Thank you so I much. Know. That means so much. I'm going to go home and cry now. <laughs> 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 oh, my goodness. <laughs> Just adding little more details here. <laughs> oh, my Lord, you all. That's, that was awesome. Thank you. And Sandy, hopefully we'll be praying for you to feel better soon. Mm-hmm. It won't be the same without you. All right, guys. Whew, that was... <laughs> turned out really cool, though. Yes, it I did. I like it. I that's like awesome. It. So why don't you that's, show... That's going up in the... In the what? Good. Oh, go, go ahead. That's going up in the house for oh, sure. Yeah, for sure. It's that time of year. And go ahead and show them your uh, succulent painting there. Oh, yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure I don't touch it. Yeah. I've got dirty hands. Here, there we go. So we did 10, at least 10 hours, maybe more. I don't remember exactly. We did, I think, seven or eight art chats in mm-hmm. my Facebook group for so, Patreon. It's yeah. a $10 level. And we did this over two months in the Thursday art chats. Mm-hmm. So uh, lots of detail on this one, but it was definitely worth it. Really cool. Turned so yeah, really the, cool. the Patreon is different levels. Yes. You can contribute. Mm-hmm. And the $1 level is for the traceables. Yes, which... and we'll have a traceable of this one for you guys after the show sometime. Right. Oh, I'm noticing I didn't do the stem on this. So while you do that, I'll come about Patreon. Okay. So the $1 level, is, again, is traceables, and that's for all this the traceables. That go back to February 2017, so you can get in there and download as many as you want, as many times as you want. Yes. And then the $5 level is the access to the traceables, plus also a bonus video that we do once a month for Patreon supporters and access to high-resolution photos also. And then the $10 level is that and also the uh, private Facebook group, which Angela just showed one of the... uh, Yeah, next month we're going to be doing uh, another project starting on Thursday, this Thursday. Mm -hmm. We're going to be doing a... I shared it on my Instagram. It's a book with a teacup. Nice. Yeah, it'll be nice. So we've got that. And do we want to show them your upcoming videos? Yes, let's do. All right, we're going to try something new here. Bear with us, everybody. Here we go. See if it works. That one's in two weeks? Two weeks. weeks. Two weeks. Yep. There we go. This is Tuesdays. Just next Tuesday. Dolphin. That'll be fun. Very simple, I think. Yeah, that's the second, I believe. And then that's next Saturday. And then next Saturday. Saturday, we'll be doing the Magnolia. And then I'll have Tuesday, the October the 9th. 9th, we will not have a show because I'll be out of town. And then seeing Fallout Boy. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll be back Saturday for the barn. So. Yeah. Oh, so there we yeah, go. I just, so I just realized I wanted to do a little bit more dabbing of color onto these centers of the things there. And this one had a little stem that came up. I keep, I keep seeing stuff. There we go. I'll go three more hours. I, I probably could. All yeah. right. I'm going to stop, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys, so much. Have a great rest of your weekend, and we will see you on Tuesday night with another video for you. All right. Bye.